really. We know that this car is faster round the Nürburgring than a Porsche 911 Turbo, which costs twice as much. We know it's faster across Japan than the bullet train. But what we don't know, because last week I was on the public roads and it was fitted with an electronic speed muzzle, is what it's like when you really put your foot down. So when the race was over, I stayed in Japan for an extra day to see if I could find out. This is the Fuji race circuit. There's no speed limit here, no traffic either, and best of all, no need to be worried by the Nissan speed governor. On normal roads, all Japanese cars are limited to 112 miles an hour. But the GTR sat-nav system knows when it gets to a racetrack and simply turns the limiter off. First of all, I must apologise for the sunglasses. This is because yesterday I picked up a hideous eye infection and I really don't think you want to see it. This, though, I think you do want to see. A flappy paddle gearbox into manual, then we put the gearbox itself into race mode, the suspension into race mode, we put that button down to engage the launch control, left foot on the brake, build up the revs. Here we go. <laughs> It's hard to say how much power the GTR develops because each engine, as I said last week, is hand-built and each one is therefore a little bit different. Well, I think they put a million horsepower in this one because the acceleration is just blistering. It's just savage. God, face ripping. <laughs> With the launch control engaged, I did 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds. And flat out, it's even more impressive. <laughs> Partly that's down to the million horsepower 3.8 litre twin turbo V6. And partly it's down to the shape of the body. It looks like a discordant mess, like Stravinsky designed it. But every crease and every angle, even on the door mirrors, is there to channel air to that big rear spoiler. The result is absolute stability and a top speed of, well, since this track has the longest straight of any Grand Prix circuit, let's find out. 160 kph there, 190. 20, come on! 240. Into sixth gear at 250 kph, 260, 275. And on the brakes. It will eventually do 193 miles an hour, and that's impressive for a car that's quiet and comfortable. A car with four seats and a boot. And it's especially impressive when you think it wasn't really built for straight line speed. Mostly it was built to mash your mind in the corners. The axles are assembled on hydraulic rigs that replicate the weight of the car, so the geometry is bang on before the suspension is bolted to the body. It uses its yaw sensor and G-sensor to measure actual yaw rate and can then adjust the Damptronic shock absorbers and the four-wheel drive system every hundredth of a second to bring the car into line with a preordained target. I don't understand any of that. But I do understand this. The GTR can corner so fast and so violently, each wheel has a special knurling on the rim to stop the tyres coming off. It is extremely hard to explain how this feels. Agony is probably the best word. The onboard readout is telling me that in that last corner, I generated one and a fifth more sideways gravity. Mm. I wish my collar had a knurled rim. It would stop my head coming off. Oh. When you really get going at this kind of speed, you expect to feel detached from the action, like you're playing a video game, just pressing buttons. 
but it, incredibly, it feels mechanical, it feels analog, it feels human. It feels fan bleeding tastic. I thought when I drove the Mitsubishi Evo 10 the other day that there was no way the GTR could be worth twice as much money. I mean, I just thought there's no way it can be twice as good, but it is, and some. They haven't built a new car here. They've built a new yardstick. Now, at this point, I was going to tell you about the incredible brakes and the turbo whistle and how Lotus secretly developed the spine of this car. But before I had a chance, I had a bit of a problem. Yes. Ah. My neck's just gone. Oh. What I need is painkillers. Honestly, I hate to cause the fuss because I don't. You hopeless old fart, a Datsun broke your neck. It was already weakened, from endlessly craning down to listen to you. Yes, <laughs> it's an um, amazing rescue service they've got there, isn't it? I was oh, very yeah. pleased to see that someone had brought a lawnmower <laughs> yeah. and a bin lorry. No, the dustbin lorry did put the fear of God into me. Much like I did with them, actually, when they took my sunglasses off. Oh, look at his eye! It's disgusting! <laughs> Now, I'll tell you the problem, OK, uh, is the... You know a lot of modern cars now have those headlamps that swivel when you turn the steering wheel? Yes. Do you know why the GTR doesn't have that? Uh, save weight. No. It's because the motors in that sort of headlamp can't keep up with the speed that thing changes direction. Honestly, it's just... Um, it corners faster than electricity. Wouldn't it be great <laughs> to know how fast it'll go around our track? Yeah. Problem is, you think it's in Japan. But it isn't. We've flown it 9,000 miles, so it can be here today in the hands of our tame racing driver. Now, some say that he isn't allowed by law within 100 yards of Lorraine Kelly. <laughs> and that he's never seen an episode of Top Gear because he's a huge fan of Midsummer Murders. <laughs> All we know is he's called Bergerac. <laughs> And he's off. Now, remember, this £53,000 car has monstered a 300 grand McLaren round the Nürburgring, but I doubt it will do that here because this is a power circuit. Very tidy through the first corner. Stig's neck, of course, made of weapons-grade titanium. And he's still all over Elton John. Let's hope he, uh, he showers afterwards. Well, that is planted round Chicago. A little wiggle on the way out. Hammerhead. Will the big V6 up front drag it wide? Not a chance. Look at that, the Stig. Four-wheel drifting for Japan, even though he thinks it's a fictional place. OK, the follow-through. Bang up the double-clutch gearbox. Sounds, sounds like a fighter jet through the tyres. Second to last corner, digital car and analog animal in perfect harmony. Gambon, super tidy and across the line. Mm. Now. now, I was expecting it to be around here, the Ferrari 430, the Murcielago 122, 123. It did it. 119.7. It's <laughs> a £53,000 four seater saloon car. And it's quicker than Carrera GT, McLaren SLR. Genuinely staggering. <laughs>